magnificent makers and spectacular circuit python programmers this is prof g and i hope you feel your skills are accelerating because we're once again going to be working with the lis 3dh accelerometer that's the accelerometer that's built into the circuit playground blue fruit and express and it's also available as an inexpensive add-on for other boards we're going to learn to detect shakes because in the way james bond likes his martinis i prefer my microcontrollers shaken not stirred and we're also going to get tapping as we learn to detect single or double taps so let's learn big and just to show you a very simple demo in the upper left we see the lights on the circuit playground turn on when the device is shaken while in the lower right we see that we can double tap on the device to toggle the green lights on or off First, I'm going to assume that you went through the prior video where we learned to detect three axis movement using the accelerometer and we plotted these results in Moo because in that video we also learned to set up the accelerometer with this code if you're using the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit or Express or this code if you're using an external LIS3DH accelerometer. And in these examples, we set up our accelerometer by creating an object that we named accelerometer. Now detecting a shake is super easy. Once we've created an accelerometer object as we did on the previous slide, all we have to do is use the shake method and it responds true if we detect a shake. Now the default threshold for shake detection is a value of 30. That's the sensitivity of shake detection if there's nothing passed between the shake method's parentheses, but there's also an optional shake threshold argument that you can pass into the shake method and that'll allow you to tweak the sensitivity of shake detection. Just set this value lower if you want your sensor to be more sensitive and make it easier to detect a shake or increase the value if you want to decrease the shake detection sensitivity. So let's try this out in code. Now I saved this code at the end of the last video. I'm going to change the comment up top to indicate lesson 14, shake and tap. And when we detect a shake, now I'm going to assume that you have a circuit playground, blue fruit, or express. And if so, why don't we set up a pixels object that we can use to turn all the lights on our CPB red when we detect a shake. So we'll create a NeoPixel object named Pixels, set that equal to NeoPixel, that's the NeoPixel library, dot NeoPixel, capital N, capital P, that's the class name, and we'll pass in board dot all caps NeoPixel, that's the location of the lights on the board, comma 10, because there are 10 lights on the board, comma, and we'll set brightness equal to 0 0.5, comma, and we'll set auto underscore right equal to true. Then down in the while true loop, I'll get rid of this old code. I'll put in a comment that says detect a shake. And we detect the shake with if accelerometer, that's the LIS3DH accelerometer object we created above. And we'll use the dot shake method with an open and close parenthesis. Since this is an if statement, always put the colon at the end. Now this statement returns true if a shake is detected. And if it is true, we'll just print out shaken, not stirred. Then we'll use pixels.fill with two open parentheses, passing in 255, comma zero, comma zero, closing with two parens. That will light up all 10 pixels in red then we'll say time sleep 0.5 to wait half a second after we detect the shake and light up the pixels and then we'll turn off all the lights with pixels.fill with double parens passing in 0 comma 0 comma 0 then save this open the serial console and as rick okasik and the cars once sang shake it up and hey look at that our shakes are being detected now i'm shaking this pretty roughly so why don't we go ahead and try to change that shake threshold in our code I'm just going to scroll up here and in between the parentheses of the shake, I'm going to type in shake underscore threshold equals, and I'll set this equal to 15. Remember the default threshold is 30. Save this. So 15 should be twice as sensitive as before. Now you can judge whether or not the shake is sensitive enough. You can adjust that threshold value, but you have yet another skill. You're shaking it up. Good work. Now let's work on taps and double taps. Now to detect taps, we first have to set up tap detection. So our accelerometer object has a set underscore tap method. So we follow it with parentheses and in between those parentheses, we're gonna pass in two arguments. First one is either a one or a two, depending on whether we wanna detect single or double taps. Just know that you've gotta make the choice to detect either single or double taps. You can't write a program to detect both single and double taps separately. And the value after that that you're passing in is going to be the threshold value. You might find a good choice for tap threshold values depends on the range property that you set for your accelerometer. And since we set ours in our code to the 8G range, I'll choose 20 as the threshold value since that's at the high end of the range indicated here. You can lower that if you want tap detection to be more sensitive, raise it up if you want it to be more difficult to detect taps. Then you can detect a tap by checking the accelerometer object's dot tapped property. That'll return true if a tap is detected, 
false if it's not. One important note, dot tapped is not a method, so it doesn't have parentheses after it. The dot shake method is a method, so it does have parens there. So remember, no parens after tapped. And now that we know how to work with this, let's try this out in code. Now back in Moo, before the while true loop, let's set up tap detection, and we do this by calling the accelerometer objects set tap method. So we say accelerometer, that's what we called our LIS 3DH object, dot set underscore tap, and between parens, I'm going to pass in 2, comma 20. 2 so that I detect double taps, and 20 is a good threshold because we have our range set to 8G. Next, now I'm not going to delete the shake code in here. I want to leave that in here so we can use this program for notes, but I am going to comment out the shake code so that it doesn't execute when my program runs. Now, I could put a hashtag in front of every line of this code that I don't want to use, but instead, I'm going to use a technique for multi-line or block comments. Now, you can comment out a block of lines in CircuitPython by adding three double quotes in a row just before the first line that you want to comment out. Then add another three double quotes in a row after the last line you want to comment out. So everything between those sets of three double quotes won't execute when the program is run. And notice how Moo indicates these lines are commented out by coloring them in green. Then after this block of comments, I'm going to check to see if my device has been tapped by saying if accelerometer dot tapped colon. Remember, you need the colon because this is an if statement. And my next four lines are going to be like these ones in my comments. So I'm going to highlight these, copy them, paste them down below so I can modify them. I'll fix the indentation on this first line and change the print statement so it says tap detected. And I'm going to change the fill color if the tap is detected to 00255. That'll be blue. Then let's open the serial monitor and let's get tapping. Save that code to start things up. Look at that. Double tap. Double tap. And double tap. These are showing up perfectly. Nice job. I like this code, so I'm going to save it to my CircuitPython folder. You got another skill coder. Let's try this out in a challenge. Now, this challenge has us do something that we haven't done before, but I think you're up for the challenge. So this is the double tap on off challenge. And the idea is to modify your code so that double taps will toggle on or off in green. So that when the code starts up, the lights are off. But after the first double tap, the lights all turn green and they'll stay green until the next double tap. Then after the second double tap, the lights turn off. After the third double tap, the lights turn on and stay on until the fourth double tap. And on and off, on and off with double taps like that so it acts like like a switch or a toggle for turning the green lights on and off. Now here's some hints. First, you're going to need to pause a short period of time after detecting your taps. And a pause after checking your if conditions will work fine. Why don't you pause, give this a shot, and just in case you run into some snags, here's an extra hint. Think about creating a variable to keep track of whether the lights are on or off. If that helps, give it another shot. And let's resume and compare answers. So since I've saved my previous code to my CircuitPython folder, I'm going to save this one too. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the comment up top so I can recognize the difference. And I'm going to call this solution double tap on off toggle. Then, and here's where that extra hint came in because we've never done this before, we're going to create a new variable to keep track of whether or not our lights are on or off. So just before while true, I'm going to create a value I'm going to call lights underscore on, and I'm going to set that equal to false because initially my lights are off. Then inside this if accelerometer dot tap statement, if I have detected a tap, I'm going to get rid of this print statement, but I'm going to add another if condition inside. So if my accelerometer is tapped, then I'm going to check to see if lights underscore on. So if the lights on value is set to true. Remember, we initially set it to false, so this is not the first case we'll encounter. But if the lights are on, if lights underscore on is true, then what we want to do is we want to turn the pixels off. So we'll set pixels fill to 0, 0, 0, and then we're going to change the lights on variable, setting it equal to false. So if lights on are true, I'm going to indent this pixels.fill value, but I'm going to change the lights to 0, 0, 0. Again, if the lights are on, I'm going to turn them off. And since we just turned the lights off, I'm going to change the lights underscore on value, setting that equal to false. Then below this, I'm going to outdent with the else condition, so else with a colon after it. And this condition fires if lights on are false. Now that should also happen when the lights are out. And if the lights are out, then what I want to do is I want to turn the lights on in green. And I also want to set the lights on value to true, because I just turned the lights on. 
So to do that, I'm just going to cut out this pixels.fill statement down here, paste it in indented under else, but I'm going to change the value so that it turns these lights on in green, so it'll be 0, 255, 0. Then under that, I'm going to set lights underscore on equal to true, because they just turned the lights on. And as I mentioned in the first hint, we need to add a short pause in our code, and we do this to make sure that the accelerometer is going to accurately record taps. Now you can try removing this pause, and if you do, you'll find that your code doesn't work. So that pause is essential, and we don't need that much of a pause, so I'm just going to change the sleep time to 0.2 seconds. And it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to outdent this so that the sleep happens each time we go through the while true loop, regardless of whether or not a tap is detected. And just to help you really understand what's going on here, I'm going to put some print statements in so that we can see when the lights are being toggled on and off. So I'm going to add a print statement in the first part of the if statement here. When the lights are turned off, I'm just going to print lights off. And in the else clause, I'm going to add an additional print statement. When the lights are turned on, I'm just going to print lights on. So let's save this, and we'll open the serial console, and let's try this out. So here we go, friends, and will you look at that? Double taps are toggling on and off, on and off. This is magnificent. Well, this is a solid example, so I'm going to save this code, too, over in my CircuitPython folder as Lesson 14 Toggle On Off Double Tap Challenge. I hope you do feel your skills are accelerating. Shakes and taps are super easy. You can use a shake at the end of a Magic Wand project, for example. You can add a double tap to activate sound and light as part of a wearable or cosplay costume. If you build something cool based on the skills you learn in these videos, tweet at me and please let me know. What you do is limited only by your own imagination, especially since you're skilling up with such deep circuit python knowledge. I hope you feel good about our time together. Keep at it. There's more big learning to come.